The Lily Cupboard, A Story of the Holocaust. On May 10, 1940, shortly after the beginning of World War II, Holland was invaded by Germany. For five years, the Dutch people endured German occupation. Jews, in particular, were sent to concentration camps, camps where many died a hideous death. But even in these dark times, there were many heroes. You know, there is a fierce war raging, Miriam. My father is speaking to me quietly. My mother is crying. Our tiny country could not hold out against the enemy. Any day no, now the soldiers will come. That is why you must go into the country. You must be kept out of danger. Miriam, my mother takes me in her arms. She smells of silk and lily of the valley. Mama, I whisper, what are you and Papa going to do? Will you be safe? We'll be all right, my dearest girl. Right now you must be kept safe, as Papa said. And before you know it, we will all be together again. The farmer and his wife, where you will stay, are very kind and very clever. Just do exactly as you are told. Besides, my, besides, my mother nearly crushes me against her chest. Besides, it will be much easier for Papa and me to take care of ourselves, knowing that you are hidden away in the country. My mother and I pack one small suitcase. I put in my favorite books. Only three, my mother says. We have to leave room for sweaters and boots. You pick them out, Mama. I can't choose. My heart feels like a little stone lantern in our garden, heavy, without a candle. What about a doll? You choose. My mother smiles, but I know her heart doesn't have a candle in it either. No dolls, I answer. They have to stay together. I turn away to hide my tears. Papa drives into the country. Tulips and hyacinths and daffodils are blooming everywhere. We stop in front of a low thatched roof form house. Fruit trees blossom up against its wall, but it's not my house. The woman has a broad, kind face and wears wooden shoes, but she is not my mama. The man is very tall and smokes a pipe and has a million wrinkles around his eyes. But he is not my papa. A boy with straw blonde hair and a freckled nose says, I'm Nello. I'm Miriam, I answer. I don't have a brother. I don't have a sister, he grins. He looks funny with his new teeth half grown in. My father shakes hands with Nello's parents. He bends down to give me a hug. I have to ask him, Papa, why am I safer here than with you and Mama? Because this family is not Jewish, he answers very slowly. He kisses my forehead. I try not to let him go, but he is gone. The cows are black and white and full of milk. Small barges move along the center of the canal. Where is the war? I don't know where the war is. I... Do you know where the war is? I ask Nello. We are sitting on a bank of grass. I am trying not to think of home. I don't, Nello throws a stone into the water. But father does. Father says the soldiers will soon be everywhere. That's why you are here. Nello's parents show me where to hide when the soldiers come. They press a lily painted on the center panel of a cupboard. The cupboard opens. Otherwise, it looks just like the wall. I peer inside. It's dark and smells of winter clothes and rubber boots. It, it makes me cold. Nello's father is saying the warning signal will be whistling Frere Jaca. He puts his arm around my shoulder. When you hear it, you must come directly here. 
After the shoulders, soldiers have gone, we will knock three times. Don't worry, Miriam, Nello's mother says. I like her voice. Don't be afraid. We will never be far from you. The next morning, Nello's mother says, oh, I'm sorry, that night the feather bed is cozy warm and Nello's mother tucks me in. But it's not my bed. I can't sleep. I can't stop crying. Nello's mother hears me and comes back. She smooths my curls back from my face. She comforts me. The next morning, Nello's mother says, I hope you fell asleep, my dear. Of course you miss your parents in your home. Nello would cry if he were not with us. But think how happy your mama and your papa are knowing that you are safe here. Come, I've made some porridge with cream that's thick and clover pink. There's nothing like it. It will make you smile. And Nello's father puts a basket by my bowl. I picked some berries long before you woke. They're fresh and ripe and still covered with morning dew. He puts the berries one by one on top of the porridge. There, he leans back in his chair. There's a bright red M for Miriam. Thank you, I try to smile. I want to smile, but... Just then, Nello jumps up from his chair. Come on! He grabs my hand and pulls me through the door. Nello's mother calls after us. The porridge! The porridge will get hot! Uh, cold! <laughs> uh, Nello takes me out beyond the kitchen garden near the wood. The hutch is full of rabbits, big and small. Choose one, Miriam. Nello thrusts his hands into the pockets of his wide blue pants. He's looking very proud. Go ahead. A small black rabbit sits apart from all the others by the wire. It looks at me. I pick it up. Its fur is like silk. It pushes close against my chest. I feel its nose twitch cold against my arm. I'm going to call you Hendrick. I kiss its ears. That's my papa's name. <clears throat> Might turn out to be Hendrika, Nello giggles. My papa says you never know with rabbits. Oh, I don't care what he is. I take a long breath and the ache begins to go away. Mama and Papa will be happy that I have a rabbit. They love animals. I kiss Hendrick's nose. You're mine and I will not let anything happen to you. The rabbit's eyes are closed. I think his cold nose twitching. I like his cold nose twitching by my arm. You are mine. I kiss his ears again. Oh, thank you, Nello. I want to hug him, but Hendrick is in the way. Thank you. I will keep him safe. I promise you. If the soldiers come, I will keep my rabbit safe. Weeks pass and I spend hours and hours with Hendrick and with Nello. Then one day I hear someone whistling. Frere Jaca, <gasps> just when Hendrick is taking his morning hops. Ooh, the soldiers must be here. Hendrick, come, come, we have to go. Hendrick is nibbling on a bit of green. I creep up slowly not to frighten him, but just as I reach out, he makes a giant hop into the herbs. <gasps> oh, then I see Nello and his father running towards me. They are both out of breath. Miriam, come on. Nello's face is beet red. Didn't you hear us whistling? The freckles on his gnomes seem very large. Miriam, the soldiers are only two farms away. I can't go without Hendrick. You know that, Nello. I have to keep him with me. Mama and Papa wouldn't go without him. You know that. Never mind the rabbit, Miriam. Nello's father reaches out for me. But I drop onto my knees and I scramble into the garden where I can see my rabbit nibbling on some chives. I'm not going into the cupboard without my rabbit. I have to protect him. She's not going without her, without her rabbit father, Nello's voice is hoarse. She named him after her father and she's going to keep him safe no matter what. I look back at Nello's father. He's nodding his head at Nello. 
Then he scoops up Hendrick and me, and we're bounding into the house fast. Nello's mother is standing by the cupboard. Get in. There's not a second left. Get in, my child, and not a sound. She doesn't notice Hendrick is in my arms. This time there's a pillow on the floor. I pull my legs up under me. Hendrick is warm against my chest. I wait. I hear heavy footsteps past my wall. It's all right, Hendrick. I comfort him without a sound. His voice is still. I hear the voice of soldiers harsh and loud. I hear Nello's parents answering softly and slowly. I don't know how long we've been waiting, Hendrick and I, but suddenly we hear three soft knocks and my lily cupboard opens to the light. <clears throat> They've gone. Nello's mother pulls me close. Nello's father takes a long puff on his pipe. Are you all right, he asks. I'm fine, thank you. I smile at Nello. And so is Hendrick. I told you, Nello, he would be safe with me. I turn to Nello's mama and papa. Just the way my parents keep me safe with you. The end. Families like this one hid Jewish children for five years till the war ended and saved many lives at the risk of their own. <laughs>